This is it. This is the keyboard I had been waiting for, the RK96, and Royal Kludge have sure delivered here. A keyboard which is very high quality, compact, yet still delivers you the experience you can get with a full size board, and also offering the user the ability to customize it to their liking. I'm really excited, so let's take a look at it in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. For this video, we'll be taking a look at the Royal Kludge RK96, a mechanical keyboard that has a lot going for it which I'm sure many of you will find intriguing. Whether you're looking for your first proper mechanical keyboard, or you're an enthusiast who's been in the custom mechanical keyboard game for a while now, this is a keyboard that will appeal to a very wide variety of folks. Royal Kludge is a brand that not many people know about, which, which is a shame because these guys are doing some awesome stuff which you just don't get with a lot of the mainstream gamer brands that are out there. And I'm so excited to finally share this review for the RK96 with you guys, as I have a lot to say about it. As someone who's been slowly growing interested in the custom mechanical keyboard scene, one of the reasons why I never fully got into the hobby was because a lot of the boards that are out there are compact boards using something like a 60% layout. The RK84 that I looked at last year was a great alternative to 10 keyless boards, it was customizable, but as someone who wants a number pad, maybe a volume knob, I couldn't really find much out there, at least not without breaking the bank that is. But then Royal Kludge reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at their new compact keyboard that still retains a number pad and is customizable. So immediately I was like, hell yeah, I'm interested. Now even though they sent this review sample out to me, all of my opinions are mine and mine alone. I wasn't paid for this review and this isn't a sponsored video. To start off, let's do a quick unboxing. Packaging and the contents inside the box are important to cover for a review as then we can see if the box did its job for keeping the board safe, if it's appealing, and what kinds of accessories are included. The RK96 comes in a fairly small box using Royal Kludge's typical black and orange color scheme. At the front of the box you have the keyboard silhouette, which I guess is a nice touch although I would have just preferred a simple picture instead. On the top of the box there is a label that tells you which variant you have relating to the switch and backlight type. On the back of the box there's another diagram of the keyboard. If I had to make any recommendations I would suggest adding some highlights of the features of the keyboard that it has to offer. Opening up the box and we have the keyboard itself wrapped in some plastic. There wasn't any packing foam surrounding the keyboard, only folded cardboard, which was a concern because then when it comes to impacts and damages during transit, it might not be able to withstand it and you all know how roughly carriers handle packages. Thankfully my board arrived in one piece. Along with the keyboard you get a keycap and switch puller which is very convenient because if you're going to be replacing them for customization that will come in very handy. And you get a fairly lengthy white USB-C to type A cable, that's pretty much all there is. Let's talk about first impressions, as you can see the model I had requested was the white version, as I wanted it to match the rest of my setup since last year I ended up migrating my components over to a white PC case and I'm using a white gaming mouse. I really like the way this keyboard looks, it has a very clean, minimalistic and sleek design. The 96% layout was also very appealing and is definitely a lot more compact than a full size keyboard. With the keyboard placed right next to my RK919, you can see just how significant of a difference there is in width and the overall size which I really appreciate. When I got into PC gaming, I used to be a fan of large gaming keyboards. I used to actually use a Logitech G11, and that thing was an absolute monstrosity compared to what we have today. Over time, I preferred the layout of compact keyboards as I felt like there was just so much space wasted and redundant keys that I don't use. Royal Kludge have come to the same realization, and the design of the RK96 really shows that. How they were able to reduce the size of the RK96 and yet keep a number pad was pretty straightforward actually. They got rid of the excess spacing between the F function keys, the home and scroll lock and many of those keys that not a lot of people take advantage of were instead integrated into some existing alphanumeric keys and can still be accessed using the function key. At least they still give you a dedicated delete key which is nice because I do use that key a lot. And finally this allowed them to shift the number pad over and reduce the excess space. A simple but very effective design as I have been using this keyboard for a couple weeks now and there was never any moment where I felt like going back to my larger RT919 and got to enjoy having more space on my desk for my mouse. Whereas when I was using my RK84, it was great, but there were moments where I was like, man, it would sure be great to have something like this, but with the inclusion of a number pad. Along with that, they also give you a dedicated volume knob, which I prefer, and a dedicated mute button. 
In regards to dimensions, the RK96 measures 14.7 inches wide, 4.7 inches in length, and is about 1.4 inches thick, taking into account the extrusion from the bottom of the keyboard. Therefore, compared to most full-size keyboards, it's actually fairly portable. Not quite as portable as the RK84, but definitely manageable. Moving on from my personal preference ramblings, I wanted to circle back to the aesthetics of the keyboard and talk about its design along with the build quality. As I said before, the sample I have has a simple white matte finish to it. There are no tacky gamer accents to be found here, which is a good thing. The whole entire frame of the keyboard is made out of plastic, but the quality of the plastic they're using feels sturdy and robust. There was practically no flex at all with the frame of the keyboard. What I was very pleased to see was the fact that the front plate where the key switches and keycaps rest on is a very solid metal plate. This will create a better and satisfying sound when typing on it, as opposed to a plastic plate. Along with that, it adds sturdiness to the overall rigidity of the keyboard. So a huge thumbs up from me to Royal Clutch for implementing that. Unfortunately though, I just don't have the same positive praise for the keycaps they're using. Just like with the RK84, Royal Clutch is using some cheap ABS keycaps. They have a slight gritty texture to them, and the plastic is quite thin. They're not terrible to type on, but if you're used to using high quality keycaps like Double Shot PBT, then you'll definitely notice the difference in inferior quality. This is something that I will be addressing when I customize this keyboard. But speaking of keys, obviously this being a mechanical keyboard, one of its major selling points is having mechanical switches. The sample that was sent out to me uses red switches, which are Royal Clutch's own in-house RK switches. I personally love the straight linear path of red switches rather than having a tactile bump. However, they do sell a brown and blue switch version, so if those suit your preferences better, you have multiple options there to choose from. The switches themselves feel smooth and consistent. You'll get a pretty decent typing experience out of them. Since they are bone stock though, there is a bit of scratchiness to them and they wobble noticeably more than my Outamu Reds, but nothing too drastic. However, this keyboard is fully hot swappable and I'm not just talking about one type of switch being compatible, but this keyboard does support 3 pin and 5 pin switches, which is very cool and convenient. As I mentioned earlier, this will be something I'll be addressing in a separate video where I'll be customizing this board with some different switches and keycaps. I think every keyboard manufacturer should just implement this kind of PCB for the keyboard. It really doesn't cost a whole lot, it allows the user to customize their board to fit their preference, and saves you the hassle of a lengthy repair if a switch gets damaged. This also opens the opportunity for them to sell their own switches as well. Also included with this keyboard is a nice wrist rest. The inclusion of a wrist rest is something I can always appreciate as it helps reduce fatigue and soreness on my wrist. The wrist rest is also white and has a smooth matte finish to it. It's made out of plastic but doesn't feel hollow. It's very sturdy, had no flex, and has some rubberized feet on the bottom to prevent slippage. What's also cool is that it attaches to the keyboard with magnets, so it's really easy to take off and put back on. What would have been nice to see would be some cable routes on the bottom of the keyboard and wrist rest. As someone who uses a pair of headphones and sits fairly far from my PC, I have a cable running across my desk that would usually be routed underneath my mousepad and keyboard. But since the bottom of the board is so flat, it would actually cause it to wobble a bit when I would have the wire running underneath it. So now I have to run my wire off to the side like this. Not a huge deal, but thought I'd point this out if you're someone who uses a headset primarily and routes their cable to the bottom of the keyboard. That pretty much covers the keyboard from the outside, so when we do a teardown of the keyboard, you can actually see Royal Clutch are using two layers of EVA silence or foam. I was very happy to see them include this because it shows that they're actually paying attention to what their fans like and the popular mods that people do with their keyboards, such as installing foam or dampening material. So this will save me the hassle from having to do it myself. So great job there, I was very pleased to see that. Moving on to the bottom of the keyboard, we can see that there are four rubberized pads on each corner to prevent slippage, and there are also two kickfeet stands which have two positions depending on how profound you want your keyboard tilted, and both feet have rubber on them. Then we can see there is a USB dongle and two toggle switches. Just like with the RK84, the RK96 
comes with its own dedicated 2.4 GHz dongle that works immediately as soon as you plug it into your PC. No need to go looking for drivers, it's a plug and play process. However, when you're traveling with the keyboard and say you forgot the dongle, don't worry, this keyboard also supports Bluetooth 5.0, so you can choose to use the board that way instead. When using the keyboard wirelessly, the experience I had was just as good when I was using it with a wire, there was no noticeable input lag, keys registered with practically no latency, and I didn't experience any sort of intermittent disconnects. I thought it was very convenient to have three different methods of connectivity that you can opt to use for this keyboard, making it very versatile. When it comes to battery life, the RK96 sports a 3750mAh battery, which enables the keyboard to last quite a long time before it runs out of juice. What's also nice for the user is that if the board hasn't been used for a while, it will turn off the LEDs, but it won't fully put the keyboard to sleep. This is preferable so you're not waiting for it to reconnect and respawn, but at least it's saving battery by not having to illuminate those LEDs. In my experience with the backlight set to level 3, I was able to get roughly a week worth of use out of it before I was prompted by the low battery indicator that I should charge it. Another thing I wanted to point out with this keyboard was the fact that, just like with the RK84, we've got two USB Type-A ports which can be used for various devices such as game controllers or a mouse. This makes it convenient if you want to sit further away from your PC like I do, and you just don't want to have cables running all over your desk, it definitely helps alleviating that. Just keep in mind, it, they won't work wirelessly. As for lighting, there's really not much to say here because the version I received has this ice blue backlighting. It doesn't have RGB. With that said, I believe they still will be coming out with an RGB version soon. So if you prefer to have those rainbow effects or various colors on your keyboard, then I suggest waiting for that one. For me personally, it doesn't really matter too much as I probably would have ended up using this backlighting setup anyways. Though you can still customize the effects of the keyboard and they also have a software which you can download if you really want to go in depth with your lighting customization. What I was also really happy to see was the implementation of the LEDs is a lot better than what I saw with the RK84. The LEDs are bright, in fact at level 5 I feel like they're just a tad bit too bright, so I keep them at level 3. So overall, the RK84 is an awesome mechanical keyboard. If you're looking at getting your first mechanical keyboard, or you've been looking for a compact board that still comes with a number pad and is customizable, then I'd say look no further. It's got excellent build quality, the typing experience on it was pretty decent, offers versatile connectivity, and having a hot swappable PCB means that it'll only get better from here once you apply your own mods. Which if you haven't already done so, get subscribed so you don't miss my video on me customizing the RK96. If you're interested in picking one up, Royal Clutch have told me that they'll soon be available from Amazon. I'm not entirely sure what the exact pricing will be, but given the pricing of their other boards, expect close to around 100 US. Though as soon as it's up, I'll have links for it posted down in the video description. So that'll do it for this video, I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.